Well, hello, everyone, and welcome to our channel. Thank you so much for being here. I am John, your host. And with us is a very revered and respected established guest, Mr. Brent Johnson. And I'm going to read off his pedigree because it is quite robust. Uh, Brent Johnson is the host of the internationally renowned Global Freedom Report, as well as the long-running freedom talk show, The Voice of Freedom. Brent is also the author of The American Sovereign, How to Live Free and Under Away from Government Regulation, The Pursuit of Happiness, Freedom, and the Human Spirit, and the spiritual book, The Quiet Voice of God. He has a superb website, which you can find at www.freedomradio.us. You can also listen to the Voice of Freedom podcast. You can also reach out to him directly, toll free at 888-385-3733. Once again, that's 888-385-3733. Brent is the director of Freedom Bound International. It's a common law service center that educates people about their sovereign rights. For more than 30 years, Brent has experienced more success than anyone else in respect to teaching practical methods of living free from the endless encroachments of Big Brother. Brent is truly a modern day freedom fighter. Brent, welcome to our podcast. Thank you, John. It is a pleasure to be with you and thank you for that very nice introduction. It's my honor. So I've, I've been really excited about this, this interview amongst the many, Brent, that we've had as we're building our channel up and kind of getting what we believe will be a stable uh, panel of people that we get to interview with frequency. And your name popped up on the radar for a while. So, I'm going to be covering two subject matters with you. Firstly, the currencies and the reset, the global reset, some ins and outs of what it entails, and then how to steward and protect that wealth once it comes in with respect to trust and the subject of trust, what people should pick and what they should look at in terms of discerning the right trust for them. So with that in mind, let's start with the first question. Brent, what are you seeing in the timelines today that the situation we're in right now in the world that gives you confidence that the reset is imminently upon us? Okay, I, I, I wanna I wanna take us off off script for a moment. Sure. Okay? So I wanna lay one thing down that underlines everything else that I teach and yeah. everything else that I do. This is at the fundamental foundation of everything else that we build and everything rests on it. And it has to do with the fact that you were born sovereign mm -hmm. and what that means, okay? Sovereignty means you are the supreme ruler of your life. Now, let me ask how many of you, show of hands, how many of you out there were created by the government? You are endowed by your creator with certain unalienable rights among these life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. So if you weren't created by the government, you did not get your rights from the government and the government can never, ever, ever take them away. I really want you to get that because I hear from people all the time, oh, they're taking my rights. They're not taking your rights. They cannot take your rights. They can take your arms. They can take your legs. They cannot take your rights. What they can do is violate your rights. And when they violate your rights, they always ask an unspoken question. What are you going to do about it? You, each of you, needs to answer that question. Now, having said that, you're endowed by your creator. Your creator is the sovereign of the universe. That means you are literally part of the royal family. Mm. It's not metaphorical. You really and truly are the king or the queen of your life. And these people you deal with in government are your public servants. You need to embrace that character. You need to walk like a sovereign, talk like a sovereign, mm -hmm. act like a sovereign. Because when you do, you will find your bureaucratic servants actually back down. I see it all the time. It's amazing. When you hold yourself as sovereign, they notice it. And it makes a big difference. And so everything else you do... And this this goes to the, the reset. This goes to protecting your rights. All of this starts with your embracing the idea that you are the ruler of your life. And nobody can ever take that from you. You can, however, agree not to exercise your rights. That's how most of you have gotten in trouble. 
by entering agreements, whether or not you've even known that you've done it, to waive your rights in favor of all kinds of government perks and privileges. Government wasn't created to take care of you. If you read the declaration, it says to secure these rights, governments are instituted. That's the purpose of government, to secure the free exercise of your rights and nothing else. It is not the government's job to feed you when you are hungry. It is not the government's job to educate you. It is not the government's job to provide for health care when you are in need. All of you think that, or many of you think probably that I'm being uncompassionate. Not at all. I happen to believe that a gift from God is more valuable than any of those other things. And if the choice is between sacrificing the gifts that God's given me and giving up the perks that government has offered me, I will never hesitate. I take God's gift very seriously. So should you. Now, having laid that foundation, okay, I speak to you as one sovereign to another. Mm -hmm. So I don't want to hear back that I can't do this because you're sovereign. Whatever it is, you can simply need to choose to. Now, you ask about the reset. Okay, for anybody who is unfamiliar with what the term means, we are about to embark on a an unprecedented change in the financial system of the world. This has never happened before, and it will never happen again. Mm -hmm. There is no history to this like it once happened, so there's no workbook that you can take the step-by-step -step issues from. It's all brand new. We're all working in a learning curve, every one of us. So 209 countries signed a treaty establishing a relationship, the nature of which was that all these countries' natural resources were going to essentially be audited and then represent a revaluation of their respective currencies. Instead of having everything based upon the US dollar and the full faith and credit of the US dollar, mm. everything would now be based on what each country actually has. Gold, silver, oil, platinum, and all kinds of other resources. Iraq, as an example, has the only working phosphorus mines in the world. You may not know that. But anybody who, for any reason, needs to use phosphorus ultimately gets it from Iraq. There's no other option. Iraq, as it happens, and we all know about the oil, but Iraq has enormous wealth in its natural resources. So the Iraqi dinar is being revalued in proportion to those resources. So are all of the other 209 countries involved in this event. Many people have purchased foreign currencies in anticipation of the event. Okay. And that when the event happens, that their currencies are going to be worth a lot more than they were worth under the fiat, full faith and credit of the US dollar system. That's been the motivation for most people. Now, what I'm here to tell you is that it's not about the money. People are always asking questions about what's the rate going to be, you know, and all that. I never answer that question because the truth is, I don't know. I have speculation. I've heard this. I've heard that. But I don't know. And neither does anybody who's saying that they they heard the rate is this or that. Nobody knows. You'll find out when you go in to exchange your currency. That's when you'll find out what the rate is. And I promise you, the rate will be a very nice rate. But it's not about the money. The idea is that the wealth that is going to come to people through these uh, exchanges of currency and redemptions of bonds is going to be usable to change the world for the better. That's what this is about. This is about providing us with a financial system that will allow us to fuel projects to literally change the world to a better place. If you're not on board with that motivation, then your motivation is simply 
counterproductive. Okay, you may or may not be successful in your exchange of currency because I'm told, I don't know for fact, but I'm told that they have a technology that will, in, a, in essence, evaluate your character. And if your character is lacking, you may not get, you may not be allowed to go through the entire event, or you may go through it and get a lower rate. I don't know. I don't know how they're going to do it. I don't know what they're going to do with it. But I do know that the most efficient, most productive motivation has to be, I want to change the world for the better. Whether you have your own project or you get on board with somebody else's project doesn't matter. And it also doesn't mean that everything you get, you have to spend on your project. None of that. Okay, you're going to have plenty to spend on things, but you need to start thinking differently. You know, the world as we know it has been about money, position, power. That's been the guiding, those have been the guiding forces. Money, position, power. You know, um, first time, first time your girlfriend's dad met you, what'd she do? Say, what do you do for a living? It's one of the first things. Or asked her, what does he do for a living? Now, it seems like a perfectly reasonable question, but the truth is what he's saying is the most important thing is how much money you make so you can take care of my daughter. Now, I appreciate that, but it's the wrong way of thinking. It makes it about the money. You know? And the truth of the matter is every one of you has skills. Money just comes from applying your skills and finding people who are interested in them. That's how you do it. You do that. Every one of you has skills. I don't care what the skills are. Whatever they are, you apply them, you can make money. It took me a long time to learn this. I used to think everything was about the money and I had no money as a result. Today, I know that making money is actually relatively easy if you let go of the reasons that you don't make money, if you let go of your attitude around it. So I invite you all to consider this event, this reset, from the perspective of you're being given an opportunity to help make the world a better place. If you approach it that way, you will be immensely successful in whatever you are seeking to do. Now, um, we're very, very close. I know that, okay? We are extremely close. It is impossible to give you a date things could happen and start launching today could start launching tomorrow me personally i am waiting to hear from the paymaster as soon as i hear from the paymaster i know that for me it has started um every one of you is in a different situation whether you have currency or bonds just for the record currency is the cash that is produced by each country. The Iraqi dinar, the Vietnamese dong, the uh, Venezuelan bolivar, those are all currencies. Mm -hmm. Then there are bonds, such as Zimbabwe bonds, or what they call Zims. Those are bonds. Um, there are also historical bonds, the German bonds, the Chinese dragon bonds, um, um, the agro checks. Currencies have a value established by their respective countries. Bonds have no inherent value. Their value is determined by the issuer of the bonds. So when you go and you wish to transform your currency into, let's say, U.S. dollars, you exchange it. It's a simple matter. I'm exchanging dinar in this amount, you know, I'm exchanging a million dinar for however many dollars. That's all it is. There's a rate involved and the rate determines what you get. Simple as that. Bonds are redeemed, not exchanged. Where you go in and they give you a rate that otherwise would not exist. There's no inherent rate in a bond. You, you look at a bond, you look at a hundred trillion dollars Zimbabwe bond. It's not worth a hundred trillion dollars unless Zimbabwe decides to give you $100 trillion, which it can do. So this is just a matter of terminology. When you're dealing with your currency, you're dealing with exchange. When you're dealing with bonds, you're dealing with redemption. 
it's all going to happen in the same place at the same time so it doesn't have to get that complicated right. okay. but we are expecting any moment for this to happen everything all the preliminaries have been done all the glitches in the system have been worked out and we are just waiting for the movement kind of like flipping the switch and having it all start now i did get a piece of intel that i can share with you I'm not going to share a lot because most of the time the powers that be don't want people putting the information out there's a ton of false information some of it coming from the good guys and some of it coming from the bad guys confuses the whole issue mm -hmm. i invite you not to pay attention to it the so-called gurus are more of a problem than they are a solution because they want something to say so they say something um a lot of times it slows the whole process down um i don't you know i i do a weekly conference call i hardly ever talk about anything having to do with intel on this event okay because that's not what they want they want everyone just chill out it's going to happen it's going to happen soon now the one piece that i will give you and this is new intel but it may change tomorrow it may not happen the way i'm going to tell it to you so you have to be flexible about that like i said none of this has ever happened before we have no track record Mm -hmm. so they're just feeling it out and this is the latest that they've decided on which is that if you are a member of a group and by the way if you say i don't know if i'm a member of a group then you're probably not a member of a group <laughs> if you are a member of a group you will be notified by email slash secure website from which you will ultimately get an 800 number to call set up an appointment to in do your exchange and or redemption if you are not a member of a group but you are part of what is called tier 4b um the the population has been broken up for convenience sake into five tiers tier one tier two these are the government the sovereigns what they call the whales really really you know ones who have tremendous amounts of of assets Tier three is specific groups that have contract rates for the redemption and or exchange. And their rates are determined by those contracts, okay, which have been negotiated by whoever the administrators are of those respective groups. Then we go to tier four, which is broken up into 4A and 4B. For simplicity, 4A is pretty much like the test run of 4b more than anything mm -hmm. it's got some whales that's you know people with a lot a lot of assets um you know and some sovereigns in there okay that's 4a most people are 4b these are the ones unaffiliated with groups just individuals who've heard about this have gotten themselves some currency and or bonds and are just waiting for it to happen the latest that we've gotten on this group is that when it begins, and I'll tell you what that means in a moment. When it begins, you will, depending upon what you have, you will either contact one of the tier one banks or you will specifically contact Wells Fargo and ask to speak with an advisor. Yes. Advisors do not work at Wells Fargo banks. <clears throat> Wells Fargo say, I want to get in touch with an advisor. They'll tell you how to do it. Um, the idea is this. If what you have that you wish to take to your appointment is simply currency, no matter what the currency is, you will go to any of the tier five banks. These are Wells Fargo, HSBC, Bank of America, Citibank, and Chase, J.P. Morgan Chase. Those are the tier one banks, just those five banks. Contact any one of them. Okay. I want to come in to, you know, I want to come in to bring some of my foreign currency for negotiation. You know, and, you know, you go in there and, and you get it done. If you have Zim, which are Zimbabwe bonds, 
If you have Zim in any amount, whether or not you also have currency, you will contact Wells Fargo and ask to speak with an advisor and you'll go see the advisor. Now, one of the questions I asked my people about this was that I thought the banks weren't going to be involved in this. They're not supposed to be involved in this. <laughs> okay. And I was told what will happen is the banks will be given very specific protocols for conducting the exchange and or redemption. And they will follow those protocols. These will not be bank accounts that are set for you. These will not be banks that are middlemen for the process at all. They will simply be conducting the mechanics of the appointment and nothing more. When you are finished, you will have an account or accounts that they're supposed to be treasury direct accounts. They will not be bank accounts. The bank will have no access to these accounts. The bank will have no control over these accounts or the funds in these accounts. You will be the banker for your account. So you will, I believe you're going to receive this. If not, you'll be told where to get them. You're going to get a device, probably a tablet or a laptop. You may also get a phone. These devices will be used exclusively to access and manipulate the funds in your account. Now, your account or accounts will be accessible only by you. When you want to take money out of what the account and move it someplace else, you will do that. Today, when you do that, the bank is the middleman. Doesn't matter what you're doing. You're writing a check, the bank is the middleman. Taking out a loan, the bank is the middleman. You're wiring funds to or from, the bank is the middleman. There will be no middleman bank. This will be directly, you will take the money, take it out, put it in another account. You will do that. And nobody else will have the ability to access the funds in your account or your accounts. They will be your funds. So that is kind of an overview of what the system is with the current protocols that I have been given. Um, I say current, again, because they could change tomorrow, okay? There is simply no way to predict this. And 99% of what's being put, on, put out there is not true. I hear the most outrageous stories almost every day. And I got to take a certain amount of time to deal with it. And it's a waste of my time. You know, stop listening to what you get on the internet. Stop listening, you know, to the so-called gurus. You know, I mean, I could tell you some things about some of them. Some of them are pretty good. You know, Mark Z has learned over time to chill out a bit, okay? Um, Judy Byington takes what she gets from other people and just puts it out. Mm -hmm. Doesn't know if it's, if it's valid or not valid. You know, Tony has vested interests in the outcome. So what he comes out with is always skewed a little bit by that. It doesn't make these people bad people. They're not bad people. They're just not serving you with a good approach to this unprecedented situation. So I invite you to be very discerning about what you hear, what you read, what you see. Okay. You know, if it doesn't sound like it makes sense, it probably, it probably doesn't make sense. It probably isn't really happening. You just take it a step at a time. You know, a lot of you get anxious because I need the money. I need the money. I need the money. And again, if you chill out, if you stop worrying about the money, it'll be there and it'll be there very soon, very soon. You just got to let it happen. That's about the best I can do in terms of, I think I responded to your question. <laughs> entirely remember what the exact question was. Did I give a, give you a sufficient answer? Oh, I, to say the least, you you actually answered several questions in, in, in one, uh, we'll call it a thesis, but I really appreciate the cogency and heartfelt intentionality with which you shared it. Uh, yeah, we tell, we tell our subscribers all the time, uh, Brent, just so you know, we tell them that 
you won't need a device to measure your intentions. God does that. God knows your heart. He He made you. He knows whether you're a giver and a taker. And I always tell people, if you're a giver, money money makes you more of what you already are. It doesn't define your character. It reveals it. And you sort of, you know, touched on that a little bit indirectly, what you were sharing. That's why we don't do dates and rates over here. We look at events and puzzle pieces and try to help people put mm -hmm. them together so they can think critically and draw their own conclusions mm -hmm. and that they need to be self-sufficient and become their own central bank, which mm -hmm. is what you were talking about, peer-to-peer -peer banking and bartering. We talk about that often. Mm -hmm. So since you wrapped up a lot of things in one, in one um, discussion point, Let's move to another one that I, I'm pretty sure we're on the same page with as well. There's a lot of uh, dissension in, we'll call it the ranks or the community with respect to taxes. And I'm of the belief that there are none since you didn't pay any when you bought the currency and you wouldn't do it when you're exchanging. You paid an exchange fee, which is the commission cost of doing business with the exchange deal or the bank. If you've been in this a long time, there was a time you remember you could buy it from the bank. Can you... Uh, to confirm or dispel this whole situation for people? The treaty of the 209 countries specifies yeah. this is not a taxable event. Mm -hmm. Every country is going to get a piece of the pie. Mm -hmm. Every country will get a small amount. Okay, I think it ranges between half a percent and maybe 2%, depending upon the country. I'm not sure of that. But every country will get a small amount, which is going to be in a, a very large amount when you think about what we're doing here and the amounts we're talking about. But they will get a relatively small amount. And that's what they will get off the top. In exchange, there will be no taxation on this. Now, there are people who are trying to sell religious trusts with the fear-mongering that says, if you don't get this trust, you will be charged 35% on everything. Mm -hmm. It's just not true. And I, that, that message has come through a number of times. And every time it's come through, I've contacted some of my sources who are extremely credible and said, has there been any change to the protocols that would allow for this? No, 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 and no is always the answer. This is not a taxable event period right there, there there's nothing to discuss about it it simply is not going to be a taxable event perfect thank you so much brent really appreciate you clearing that up and it's interesting too because just in the last uh what 12 to 24 hours some interesting news came out i don't know if you've heard it i'm i imagine you have but dutch dutch central bank has announced that their position for the gold standard and you have argentina who has a new president javier Millet. Mm -hmm. who has pretty much dedicated himself to abolishing the central bank. Who does that mm -hmm. sound like? President Trump? Hmm. So we see all these parallels. Even Wall Street is acknowledging the biggest crash in history is coming. Mm -hmm. So one other question I want to ask you on the economic front, um, it's kind of a two-part question, but I think you can handle it because you're very multiversed, as you've, de as you've demonstrated today. Um, and that is the... Okay, the first part of it is the ISO 20022 that's now being launched for the new digital economic reality fact and assets. What are your thoughts about that in terms of helping to level the playing field? Coupled with where do you see once this um, unprecedented global reset uh, continues or begins, depending on how you look at it, uh, what do you see that doing for oil, gold, and silver and for the stock market and the real estate market? Okay, first on the ISO 222, uh, my, the last I heard, which is a couple of days ago, was that that launched yesterday. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's correct. Uh, and set the standard for everything else to come out. So that's why I say we are very, very, very close. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. that had to happen. Correct. That's done. Um, the, the, the system we have been living in is a debt-based system. That's where all your hedge funds, your derivatives, your, you know, all the funny business that the banks have done over the years has been done because we're a debt-based system. Everything is debt-based. Okay. The full faith and credit means debt-based. That's mm -hmm. what it means. Mm -hmm. Okay. And and actually you'll see where they have statistics 
of the amount of debt that this country is carrying. You know, debt has become a form of a commodity in this system. Mm. Okay. Do you own the debt? You know, and, and if you own the debt, that means certain things, you know, uh, in, in the economic world. The new system that we are entering to which into which we are entering, the new system is asset-based, asset-backed. The assets of a given country determine the value of its currency. Now, because all countries have pretty much been on a fiat-based, debt-based system, the change from one system to the other is going to be enormous. It's going to be enormous. So where the Iraqi dinar may have been worth, you know, a million dinar to, I don't know, you know, one dollar, suddenly a million dinar is going to be worth $10 million or something like that. And, and I'm just making this up right now. Okay, mm -hmm. these are not real figures. But the change is going to be enormous because you're changing from one system to another system. Okay, and the new system, as I say, is going to be gold backed so it will be based on assets themselves now once the change happens and is complete then the relative value between one currency and another will virtually never change mm. unless a country happens to discover a brand new um previously unknown cache of gold you know or oil or something like that and that might adjust it because its its actual resources will have changed but pretty much the relative value between one currency and another will you know stay very much close to one to one the idea being okay that you're not going to be able to sit there and play games with buying and selling currency to going to make some money off this depending watch you know watch the screens to see did it go up today did it go down today and all that that will not happen anymore. Okay. Um, gold and silver should settle much, much higher than it is than it has been, you know, for many, many years. Because for many years, it's been basically manipulated because the debt-based system allows for that manipulation. An asset-based system doesn't. The assets are there or they are not there. And that provides the value for individual assets. Okay, that value is determined by the fact that the system itself is founded on asset. Asset is what has value. Debt is not what has value. So I expect gold and silver to go up very much. And when it finally reaches where, wherever the adjusted place is, it will probably sit there for a very long while, not move too much up or down. That would be my opinion. Uh, I do think it'll get up very, very high though, because currently it's very, very low because of the system. Mm -hmm. We're changing the system. Mm -hmm. um, I believe the stock market is gonna go away completely. Wow. Okay, the stock market is based on the debt-based system. You're basically paying money to buy a piece of a corporation, the corporation, if it does well, then you make a little money. If it does poorly, you lose your money. But all of what the corporations do is based on the fiat system, the debt-based system. All of the mechanics, all of the funny business in which they engage will no longer be possible under the new system. Um, so I don't see stock market being a, a viable entity. Now, I don't know how that will go away. I don't know what will happen, but I don't see it as being able to survive in the asset-based system. So I think it will become obsolete. Um, I also think most cryptos will have the same fate. Yeah. Um, the cryptos that are based on assets, okay, gold, silver, platinum, iridium, um, okay. you know, copper, mm -hmm, those will be fine. Yeah. I think everything else, including Bitcoin, Ethereum, you know, all that stuff, I think, I really believe is going to go away.
Hmm. I do not believe it will be able to survive. It. Okay, that's what I think will happen with that. So I do not see stocks continuing. They'll continue for a while because they're going to have to figure out a way to make it happen. Okay, uh, people are so fear-based and so uh, attached to the things that they have okay that if it happens too suddenly it'll freak people out and they'll be jumping out of windows mm -hmm. so i'm not sure how the mechanics will work out and i tell people all the time honestly don't know what it's going to look like on the other side of things um we're going to have to wait and see how it looks we know what we're anticipating is going to happen but how it's going to happen i have no idea whatsoever supposedly all the administrative agencies in the U.S. government are going to disappear. Supposedly, we will restore full and complete rule of constitutional law. That's a massive change. Mm -hmm. That means all the administrative agencies, which most of you have been depending on, will disappear. How are they going to do that? How are they going to eliminate Social Security when so many people are dependent on it? I don't know. I don't know the answer to that. But... It, the indications are it will have to happen. Supposedly, the IRS will go away. Everybody will welcome that. Yes. You know, it won't be a big deal to, for people when they find out it goes away. But there are so many changes that are going to happen because you're going from one system to a completely different environment. Um, the asset based system will be. Um, monitored by and administered by something called the quantum financial system. Um, it actually will be called different things in different places, but it's all the QFS. And the quantum financial system is to be a blockchain system that will recognize where every single dollar, to use the term, is in the world. And it will not allow in the system any funny business, okay? Any money that is not clean money will simply not enter into the system. It will not allow it in there. It will prevent it from coming in. Um, it is supposed to be unhackable. It is supposed to be unbreakable. Personally, okay, I don't accept that because I don't care what technology exists there will be people working diligently to figure out how to break that technology. And sooner or later, they'll figure it out. But hopefully by that time, there will be other mechanisms in place to counter what they do. Mm -hmm. So I don't think the bad guys are going to disappear just because we wish it. But um, I do think economically, everything will change. Money will have much greater value. Um, yeah, and and because of that, we're going to be able to do tremendous things with the money that we have to make the world a paradise, which is the whole object of this. Yeah, you know, this is not about making you or me rich. This is about changing the world into something much more reminiscent of what the creator would like. Hmm. So that's, that's kind of my view on the economics of things. I, again, I'm not sure if I got to everything you wanted me to get to on it. But, um, you know, I think it's an exciting time. I think we are in for, you know, a, a very special time. And you just got to, you know, what I said at the beginning, you are sovereign. You are the ruler of your life. You have to accept that because otherwise you're going to sit there saying, I don't know how I'm going to handle this. This is all so different. I can't do this. You can and you will. Yes. And you just have to have faith in your ability to take on the rulership of your own life. Well, beautifully stated. Thank you so much for that. You 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 summarized quite nicely several subjects and, and made them intertwined. So thank you so much for that. Um, I actually believe, Brent, that there'll be a period of time in this transition where we won't know what the dollar's value is because everything's going to have to get reassessed. It's you know during the hyperinflation period, right? there's going to be a lot of things shaking up. So we're going to have to learn as we go. And I also think the other benefit of the wealth transfer is we're going to be forced to need each other. This whole idea of entitlement and, and, and I don't need anybody is going to go away. We're going to have to start to work together. And many of us will choose to do that, thankfully, but others will come along for the ride. 
so as Brent indicated, <clears throat> um, if you are thinking about getting currencies or you have currencies you want to add to your position, uh, or if you are trying to get gold and silver, or again, improve your position, and you're looking for a way to maybe get some of that and you don't have any expendable cash, maybe you have a 401k, for instance. Um, we do have some partners we work with. We're just making recommendations. We're not saying you have to go with them, but just making some options, recommendations that you can use at your own discernment and discretion for different uh, options for currencies, bonds, and liquidation for gold and silver. We'll leave that link in the description for you. Um, let me say something. Let me say something, by the way, about that. Sure. When people come to me and they say things like, what do I do with my I IRAs? Okay, right. now IRAs are different than 401ks. Correct. So rest them differently. I believe you should terminate your IRA mm. immediately, regardless of whether there's a penalty or not. The IRA is controlled by the Internal Revenue Service. Mm. The Internal Revenue Service is parent corporation is the Department of the Treasury, which is not the U.S. Treasury. Hmm. Department of the Treasury's parent corporation is the Federal Reserve. So the Federal Reserve is the grandparent corporation of the IRS. Money that is paid to the Internal Revenue Service goes to the Federal Reserve and from there goes out of the country. In other words, it leaves the economy. If everybody stopped paying income tax tomorrow, there would be a massive infusion of money into the U.S. economy that is currently being siphoned out of it. So that's that's for anybody who says if you're not paying your fair share and all that kind of garbage. Okay, um, why would you leave your funds in an entity controlled by a private banking cartel mm. that does not seek to do any benefit to your country? Why would you do that? So I believe your money is better served by being in your control. Great. And if it's an IR, in an IRA, you basically are trusting strangers who work for an evil organization to handle your money. Mm. What happens if they decide, well, we're bankrupt. You can't get your money back. What are you going to do? You know? Why Why do you allow that to go on? So I always recommend to people, first thing, terminate your IRA. I don't care what you do with it, just terminate it so that the money is under your control rather than the IRS's control. Now, it's a little more dicey with a 401k because a 401k has both the IRS and a third-party corporation involved in it. Mm -hmm. And so you may have hoops you need to jump through that are determined by that third party, which is why I can't give you a step-by-step -step on it because it depends upon what the terms are of that third party agreement, okay? But there should be a way for you to terminate your 401k. And again, I would recommend that because the money should be in your control. And if that means you have to give up some of what they're giving you, give it up. So that it's worth it if you get control of your funds. Then you could decide. You want to put it into gold and silver? You put it into gold and silver, and that gold and silver is yours. Yep. You wanted to put it into some kind of investment? Put it into the investment, and the return is yours. You're not trusting the IRS or any other corporation with your money. I just think it is an unwise thing, especially in today's climate. You know, the banks are falling apart. Corporations are going down. All of this stuff is happening. And you've got your money in this stuff. Mm. So I always recommend taking it out of that stuff. Okay. And having it in your control. Then you get to decide what to do with it and, you know, make a difference with it. However you want to make that happen. So that's just my opinion, you know, on that particular issue. I just wanted to chime in when you mentioned the IRAs. I thought it was wise to do. Thank you. I really appreciate you supporting that and giving further articulation. So the last question for today's show, um, and this is going to be like a softball for you, Brent. It's probably from what I've watched you is probably your par excellence amongst many subjects. And that is the subject of trust. 
there's a lot of discussion within our community about uh, concern, consternation. Do I need a trust? Do I not need a trust? Should I get one pre-RV, post-RV? Lots of disinformation out there. So I know you'll be able to settle that once and for all. Should people, when they do the exchange, have a trust before they go? And if so, what type of trust do you recommend? Okay. First, let's address at the exchange or redemption. Okay. Um, the people who are conducting these activities, the meetings and such, the appointments, they want you to have a fictitious entity. I also want you to have a fictitious entity. If you are involved in the RV, you're going to come out with a lot of money. You're going to enter the world of high wealth. That automatically puts a target on your back. There are people who make a living identifying people with high wealth and then going after their wealth. They are very well resourced. They are very well financed. And they are very, very smart. You ignore them at your own risk. So, number one, I do not think that you should have anything in your own name. Ownership, and this is a universal principle, equals liability. The owner of property is always liable for any damage caused by that property. It doesn't matter if you're the owner of a corporation, a trust makes no difference. And it's a universal law. It always applies. The wealthiest people in the world own nothing. Because when you own nothing, you have no liability. And when you have no liability, the people in government who are criminals, because they violate the law, people in government who seek to take what's yours and make it theirs, leave you alone because you have nothing they can take. So they leave you alone to live your life in peace and freedom, which is the ultimate objective of all of this, this whole discussion. So number one, you do not under any circumstances want to go into your appointment in your own name, open up accounts. I guarantee you there will be people who will find that out. It'll happen. This is also why I tell people, do not go to your appointment where you live. You know, go no less than 50 miles away. In some cases, I'd say go to a different state. Like I would never do an appointment of this sort in California, simply because I don't trust the California government not to try and stick its dirty hands into your pie. Okay, so... You might go to Nevada. You might go to Arizona if you're in, if you live in California, but you don't go someplace that is close to where you live, because I guarantee you, people will find out. I don't care how quiet you are about it. I don't care how secretive you are about it. People will find out, especially in today's digital world. Okay, and once that information is out, hey, John has a whole bunch of money then I promise you this, John will regularly hear from people, distant cousins who never knew he even existed, who just found out he's alive. Isn't it wonderful? We have another family member. Can we get together? By the way, I'm working on a project and maybe you can help me out. Guaranteed. Once it starts, you can't stop it. It's like jumping off a high dive. All your thoughts and anxieties and fears should happen while you're on the on the board. The moment you die, the moment you jump, you're going down. You can't stop it. You can't go back up on the, the diving board. Okay? So the moment you set up your appointments and information in your own name, you can't undo it. So you better think about this. You're a sovereign. You are responsible for your actions. You'd better think about those actions before you do them. Now, um, it shouldn't be an issue because the people conducting these meetings want you to have a fictitious entity, as do I. Okay, a fictitious entity is an entity with an EIN. It could be an LLC. It could be a trust, statutory trust. Either one will work. If you walk in unprepared, 
they will probably seek to sell you a bank trust, a skeleton trust. Now, I've spoken to bankers about this. And they said, no, it's a very bad idea. First off, they're going to charge you 1%, which is outrageous. Secondly, um, unless you know how to read a trust indenture, you will likely miss the fine print. And the fine print could, if it's a bank trust, they're going to write the trust to benefit the bank. And it, there could be provisions in there that make it harder for you to get access to your money. For example, they could have something called a spendthrift provision where the bank can decide whether or not you can get your money. Or they could have something in there where you have to apply to a, a, a trustee council of the bank when you want to get money. They may not. But the point is that if you end up using a bank trust, skeleton trust, you likely aren't going to know the hidden traps in there. So I do not recommend you go to your appointment without being prepared. Okay, and the way you prepare is you either set up an LLC, which is my recommendation, or you set up a statutory trust. Now, I've had a number of people say, I can't afford the LLC. So I've told them there are places you can go. There's something called rocketlawyer.com, where you can actually sign up for their um, their program. It's a seven-day free trial. You put in their search engine, Living Trust. You get the trust. You you know give them the information, print out the trust, and then cancel your trial membership ends up costing you nothing. You have a valid trust. You get an EIN for that trust. You take it in when you go in. It's not the best option. It's not the most private option, but it will suffice for what you need when you go in. I believe the LLC is the better route because what we do is we, we've we given it a name and it's not a real name. It's just one we made up, but we call it the Stealth LLC. This is an LLC that comes out of South Dakota. South Dakota has the best privacy protections in the country for LLCs. Under South Dakota state law, the name of the owner, the member, and the manager is not in the public record. So nobody knows you've created this LLC or that you control it unless you tell them. Secondly, the EIN that comes with the LLC is not connected to your social security number in any way. So it makes this LLC far more private than anything else that you can find. You need a statutory entity because you need the EIN and that makes it a statutory entity. But even a statutory trust will, there are things that will expose you that are not part of the stealth LLC. So I recommend the Stealth LLC first and foremost, okay, for going in for your exchange or, or your redemption. Um, you need something, okay? If you have nothing, they're going to try and sell you one of the bank trusts, okay? So <clears throat> you need to have something. <clears throat> I recommend the LLC first. If you absolutely can't afford it, um, it costs $1,500. If you absolutely can't afford it, then... You know, you can go the route of getting a statutory trust. And then as soon as you get your appointment done and you get your funds in, you could maybe contact us or something and we'll set up the LLC for you. You could transfer everything over there. You know, there are ways to accomplish these things. But um, you do want to have something so that it's not in your name. Now, understand, when you set things up, Okay, you go in to get your appointment, you bring in your currency and or bonds, you go through the exchange, the redemption, they set up accounts for you. Now, I, I intend to ask them to have separate accounts for my different currencies and or bonds. So I'll have an account for dinar, I'll have an account for dong, I'll have an account for zim. Okay, the reason I'm doing that is that none of this has ever happened before. We don't know what problems may occur. Maybe a few days down the road, there's something that happens that causes a glitch in the dinar. Well, I don't want all my funds suddenly frozen. But if I have them separate, maybe the only thing that gets frozen is the dinar and everything else is still free and clear. 
until they work out whatever the problem is. Now, I'm not anticipating a problem. I don't think there will be a problem. But we've never done this before. We just don't know. So in anticipation of anything is possible, I'm going to set up multiple accounts. Okay. So each of those accounts, you will have direct access to. They will either give you or um, they'll either give you the devices or they may give you vouchers for the devices and you go someplace to get them. Devices will be either laptops or or iPads or something like that and possibly a phone as well. These devices will be used exclusively to access your funds under the new quantum financial system. Okay, they will not be used for anything else. You will not download anything. You will not play games on them. You will not uh, get email on them. Nothing. You will not watch videos on them. The only thing you will do with these devices is access, manage, and administer your funds in these accounts. And that's it. Okay. As long as you do that, you'll be fine. Now, you will get trained in how to access these accounts and how to transfer funds from these accounts to other places. There will be a time, a period of time, we don't know how long, when the quantum financial system accounts and the SWIFT system fiat accounts will coexist. It will take time for everything to transition fully over to the QFS. So during that time, you may be transferring funds from a QFS account to some other account or whatever. I don't know. I don't know how it's going to work. Neither do you. We'll find out. You will get clued into it. All of us will. I'm told that many of the redemption centers will have classes for people to go in in groups, you know, and you go in there and you learn how to access your funds and things like that. Again, I don't know. Whenever you go to do your appointment, they'll tell you. They're going to let you know how you're able to. And if they don't, you ask them, how do I access these funds? And you transfer. They will tell you. They're, they're going to be prepared to teach you how to do this. Um, so number one is you do not want to do this in your own name, period. Okay. You know, keep in mind when you leave that appointment, you will have a target on your back. How big or small the target is depends upon how well you have thought in advance to keep the ownership of these funds as private and secret as possible. Okay. I don't want anybody to know that I've got wealth. So I'm going to have a number of different fictitious entities set up. Okay. I, you know, <clears throat> I, I already have something called a corporation soul. What, mine is old, so it got grandfathered and they changed the rules about them or I would talk about them. I won't these days. Um, I intend to set up a foundation as well, which is an overseas entity. It's called the Private Interest Foundation. And that will allow me to move funds overseas without setting off any red flags and then to move funds wherever I want them, whoever I want to have those funds, without setting off any gifts for gift taxes or anything like that. You know, so I will have different types of entities. My foundation, I intend to have accounts in Switzerland, Luxembourg, Liechtenstein, probably Isle of Man, and possibly Singapore. Okay, And have funds in each of those places, because I don't think you should have funds in any one place. What if a meteor falls on that place? Everything is gone. You know, so I don't think you put everything in one basket. Okay. Um, now, having said all of that, what do you do with these things? Okay. What I recommend is now you have two things you're dealing with. You're dealing with liquid assets, and I specifically mean cash. Okay. I'm not talking about precious metals at this point. Liquid assets is handled one way. Everything else can be handled another way. In most cases, everything else would be put into common law pure trust organizations. Now, a trust, any trust, is simply a right of property held by one party for the benefit of another party. That's all it is. So you go to a fancy restaurant, you give the keys to your car to the valet to park your car. 
legally that's a trust. It's it's called an implied trust because it's not written down. If it was written down, it would be an express trust, but it's not written down, so it's an implied trust. But that car is under the control of the valet. He can take that car and bring it to the parking area and park it wherever he wants to for your benefit. Right of property held by one party for the benefit of another. And then he can bring it back, okay? And if he's got a big parking lot, he can go down any of the lanes of that parking lot that he decides to to bring it back to you when you're done with the with the meal. So he has absolute control of that for your benefit. That is a trust. Mm -hmm. What he cannot do is while you're eating, he cannot take the vehicle and go cruising up and down the boulevard to impress his friends because that would not be for your benefit. That would violate the trust. A common law trust is a trust created under fundamental law. Fundamental law can be summed up by saying under common law, you can do anything you want as long as you do not directly violate the life, liberty, or property of another. That pretty much sums it up. Common law predates government. So common law trusts existed prior to government. So government has no control or regulatory authority over common law trusts. They do regulate statutory trusts, but not common law trusts. So when you put property into a common law trust, it erects an impenetrable um, protection around that property. Let's say you put your house into a common law trust. Let's say the IRS is coming after you. They can't go after the house because it's not yours. It belongs to the trust for your benefit. If the house is sold, you get the proceeds, but it's not your house. It belongs to the trust for your benefit. Now you can take it out of the trust if you want, but until you do, it's owned by the trust and ownership equals liability. So the trust carries the liability. Now, if you're smart, you take what assets you have, you don't put them all into one trust. I would never put a vehicle in a house in the same trust because if the vehicle gets into an accident in a no-fault state, the house could end up being attacked because the it has the same owner. But if you're smart, you diversify your assets into different trusts. I had a farmer who set up, a farmer in Minnesota who set up a, a four trust. The first trust, he put the farm business into the trust the payables, the receivables, all of that. The second trust, he put all the land and the structures, the house, the barns, things like that. The third trust, he put the heavy equipment, the backhoes, the tractors, all that stuff. And in the fourth trust, he put the livestock. Then the trusts that held the land, the structures, the heavy equipment, and the livestock those trusts leased those assets to the trust that owned the farm. So the farm got to operate on the land using the house and the barn. Okay, It got to use the heavy equipment that it used for managing the farm. And it got to graze the livestock on the land. It got to do all those things. But if somebody had a grievance against the farm and decided to sue, they couldn't go after the land, they couldn't go after the, the livestock, and they couldn't go after the equipment because the, the owner of the farm did not own those things. As a second example, I had a dentist set up two trusts. In one, he put the dental practice. In the other, he put half a million dollars in very valuable equipment, diamond drills, which are real diamonds, Okay, uh, x-ray machines. He had half a million dollars in that. That went into a second trust all by itself. That trust then leased the equipment over to the trust that owned the dental practice. Same thing. Somebody has a grievance against the dentist, they can't go after the equipment. So by being smart and diversifying the assets into different trusts, you minimize the liability overall and you eliminate your personal liability by owning nothing. I own nothing, I'm a pauper. I absolutely own nothing at all. Because I own nothing, I have no liability. Because I have no liability, nobody can take anything from me. And so they leave me alone. 
This is what these trusts can do for you. Now, the only thing the trust cannot effectively do is open up banking because it doesn't have an EIN. It's not a statutory entity. An EIN is a, the property of the government. If the EIN is assigned to you, it means you have government property attached to you, and that's how the government regulates and controls you. Well, a common law trust has no such EIN to give the government control over it. So the question is, what if the common law trust owns a piece of property like a business that generates revenue? Where do you put the revenue? That question has to be answered. The way I deal with it most of the time is I have the client set up a stealth LLC. And the LLC gets hired by the trust, by contract. The job of the LLC is to manage and administer the money that belongs to the trust. The LLC has an EIN. It opens up a bank account. The account information goes into the banking resolution of the trust. This is where trust money is held. Let's say you put a business in trust. The trust will hire you as general manager to run the day-to-day -day operations of the business. You do the hiring, the firing, the marketing, the design, everything. You handle it. You're the boss but you just work there. You're not an owner with liability. Mm -hmm. okay. Now, you go over and you set up a stealth LLC. You're the manager, the owner, the member of the LLC. You're the sole member. As a result, the LLC has no reporting requirements. It's considered by the IRS to be a disregarded entity. It's a single member LLC. Okay, And such, it doesn't have to do anything with reporting or with filing returns or anything like that. Now, the trust hires the LLC to be this financial management agent. The LLC opens up a bank account. Bank account is where the trust funds are held. You have a contract with the trust to run the business. Let's say the contract calls for you to get $1,000 a week. Okay, so every thousand, every week, you get to go to the LLC because you're the manager of the LLC. You're the signatory on the LLC account. You go to the LLC, you cut a check to yourself for $1,000. That's your compensation for your job running the business that's belonged to the trust. So that's the way that we normally recommend handling funds that belong to a trust, money that comes in from assets held by the trust. And it's done in a way that maximizes your privacy, minimizes all kinds of exposure, minimizes any regulatory authority. And the even though the LLC is a statutory entity, the money in the account doesn't belong to it. Right. It is just an agent. Therefore, it carries no liability and neither do you because you're acting as an agent for the LLC and an agent for the trust. So using these trusts, you can protect the property, remove it from statutory authority, do it as anonymously as possible, and go about whatever it is you're trying to do. For example, if you're gonna if you're gonna get your money from this exchange and you're gonna set up a project, I would recommend you set up one of these trusts and hold the project in the trust. Now, there are a lot of other things you can do. There's, like I said, the foundation that I described. Okay, which is a great entity for overseas presence of funds and for being able to move funds. You want to you want to put some money in. You want to give some money to your daughter or to your mom, you know, or to your wife or whatever, or whoever. Using the foundation, there are ways to do that without incurring gift taxes, without incurring any kind of um, regulatory annoyances that most people would rather do without. And it's all lawful. It's all completely legitimate. Nothing you're doing is underhanded. Nothing you're doing uh, is, is wrong or bad. Um, it's the kind of stuff that the ultra wealthy know how to do and you're not supposed to. So I recommend, that's what I, I talk about trust. I recommend using these trusts. Now, you know, I can't give you in this short interview a extensive lesson on trust. I've been working these trusts for over 30 years. We have been attacked by the IRS, by the Department of Defense, believe it or not, and by individuals trying to pierce the trust veil. Nobody has ever succeeded.
not once in 33 years. So, um, you know, we've got a very solid foundation. These trusts have been around since the beginning. Like I said, Patrick Henry started it. He mm. had the first trust in America. Yep. Uh, you know, it was called the North American Land Company, and it was around for 200 years before it finally closed down. Um, these trusts have been around since the time of Plato. Plato is believed in the year 400 BC to have had a common law pure trust. They've been around forever. They're completely legitimate. The Supreme Court recognizes and has had numerous rulings on the uh, the common law pure trust being not subject to legislative control. Um, so these have been around for a very long time, and I would invite anybody who wants to know more, check out my website, get my book, The American Sovereign. There's a chapter on trust in there. I'm going to be giving a two and a half, three hour webinar on Zoom on December 16th. That's a Saturday that people might want to uh, participate in. There is a cost. It's $300 per person. It's well worth it. I also give a six week course on this, which is a personal course. If you, if you signed up for the six week course, it would be you and me, nobody else. You could do it with a group of people if you wanted to. Okay. But it's designed as a personal class that goes in depth not only into what the trusts are but in how to act as a trustee for these trusts by the time you're done you're in a position to actually sell these trusts and make commissions on them um so they are invaluable i strongly recommend people to look into them um and you know the best way to get started would be to get a copy of my book the american sovereign because you know it's the least expensive way to get involved it will change the way you look at everything. It's not just about the trust. It's about so much more. Uh, and it will give you tools with which to address your newfound wealth. And that's really the issue. You're entering a world of wealth. You're going to buy a lot of things. You don't want to buy them in your own name. You don't want to own anything in your own name. Mm -hmm. If you don't do that, you'll keep the target on your back as small as possible. Yes. And that's what I recommend for everybody. Brent Johnson, thank you for being on our podcast. We really appreciate it. Thanks for all your time, knowledge, and insight. Have a very happy Thanksgiving to you and your family. We'll look forward to seeing you again soon. Thank you. I would like to leave you with just two thoughts. One is remember what I said. You are sovereign. You are the ruler of your life. Don't let anybody ever tell you otherwise is not true and the second thing is just to give out the contact information you can call me toll free at 888-385-FREE it's 888-385-3733 you can also go to the website www.freedomradio.us freedomradio.us you can get information about the various things we have discussed. You can get trust information, applications, LLC information, foundation information. Check out the other books and CDs and DVDs that we have there. Um, all of it is extremely valuable information to teaching you how to live your life free from government regulation. So God bless you all. I hope that on this Thanksgiving, you will take the spirit of Thanksgiving and Wherever you are, whatever you're gathering, your family, your friends, everybody, speak of that which for which you are thankful. Remember gratitude, because it's a real good way to start a whole fresh new year yes. in gratitude. God bless you all. Thank you so much for having me, John, and I look forward to coming back. Thanks again, Brent. Take care.